Coming up on the program, we're going to plant 10 different varieties of cucumbers. Are we a little insane? Well, that's debatable, but we're going to do all 10 and we'll explain what they are and what they're used for. And it's time to plant our yacons, a root crop from the Andes Mountains in South America that we've been growing in Zone 5 for several years. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. MIGardener.com, over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic, flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sioux, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit Sioux Growing Supply Com. Stop before you dig. Call Digger's Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Digger's Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. HappyLeafLED.com. Commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors. Simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. All indoors. HappyLeafLED.com. Sustain Natural Fertilizer. Offering superior organic plant foods that deliver research proven results. Trusted by farmers, growers, and gardeners for 30 years. Learn more at Sustain.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We're in the large garden and we've moved our trellis, our cucumber trellis, from the bed here last year that we had cucumbers mainly. We had a few pole beans on the far end and where we had tomatoes and peppers beneath the trellis, which worked really, really good. We moved over two beds to this. This is this area here. This is where we had tomatoes or uh, potatoes last year, uh, early in the season, beets, and um, I think that was it. I think we had uh, beans in the back there. So the reason why we moved this trellis was we want to plant cucumbers again on it. And if you don't move the trellis or move your crop, crop rotation, the cucumbers have sucked a lot of the goodiness out of the soil. So if we plant them again in that same location, the likelihood of having as good or better of a crop will be minimal unless we pump a lot of fertilizer into the soil and add a lot of amendments, which we do use organic pro products like uh, Sustain, as well as natural leaves, dry grass clippings, yard waste, that type of thing uh, in the fall and throughout the year. But you want to move them. This is simply a homemade trellis, and trellises don't have to be uh, expensive. They don't have to be pretty. What we simply have here is a centralized, a central uh, nylon or uh, string here, a rope, and then we have baling twine, agricultural baling twine. This is the stuff they use to wrap the big round bales. And we've looped it around the string at the top and then ran it down each side. At the base of the string, we have just boards, uh, logs, uh, stair uh, handrails, whatever we could find to put on the ground to tie it. Notice it's not tight. We want some give in this. We're not trying to make a fence so tight to keep livestock in a pen. Same concept here. If we had this so tight and then we have, let's say, literally 50 or 60 pounds of cucumbers growing on it, it's already tight. You're adding more tension to it. That's not good. You want to, give a, you want to have a little give so the wind blows it, the plants can grab it, the give and take. You don't want these things to be taut. So I've dug trenches on both sides and at the end here, uh, we ran out of the trellis was a little longer since we moved it to a different area. I've just got two baby cribs on top of one another uh, tied together so we can utilize that. We're going to apply some sustained fertilizer to this bed, the appropriate ab uh, ac uh, a rate that is on the back of the bag. And now we're going to talk about the cucumbers that we're going to grow. We're going to grow 10 different varieties of cucumbers. That is a lot. We're going to grow some here. We're going to grow some in the front yard garden as well as the sister-in-law's backyard garden. We're growing a lot of these because and that are new, but we want to try them. Not all of these are for pickling purposes. We can juice them, we can eat them, we can make cucumber relish, we can use it, make cucumber uh, water out of it. So let's go over several of them or all of these. 
This is a white cucumber. It actually appears as it is on the uh, image there. It's white. Now, MI Gardener uh, says that these are wonderful eaters, great for eating. These all take about 55 to 70 days to reach a mature state, but these are not good for pickling. When it, they attempted to pickle these, they turned very gray and it looked like, quote, elephant toes you had pickled in a jar. So good for eating, unique specialty uh, conversation piece, but not good for pickling, good for eating. We're gonna uh, beta alpha, a smaller uh, cucumber. We're gonna look into whether or not this is a good pickling or not, but definitely a good smooth skin, spineless uh, cucumber that can be eaten very well uh, without any problem. This is the Puda Carana uh, cucumber, very gr uh, brown in color, very unique. Certainly going to give this a try and see what we're, uh, what we believe uh, the taste is and what we can do with it. The old favorite national pickling cucumber. We can certainly do that with pickling, uh, make pickles out of that, no problem. Muncher, a very good salad cucumber, uh, four to six inches in length, very smooth texture, very good. Armadian yard long, absolutely uh, a unique uh, cucumber they actually get a yard long. So there's a lot of weight on these cucumbers uh, on this trellis. So uh, we can certainly attempt to grow these. Uh, Boston pickling, another familiar one. We're all, we all know what that means. We can pickle that one. Wisconsin SMR pickling, we can pickle that one. We're also growing some lemon cucumbers, which are, they look like lemons, as well as some market more, which is just a salad or eating cucumber, which you can pickle, but we have found on like the market moors or some of these non-pickling cucumbers, when you try to pickle them, even when you use uh, pickle crisp from uh, your canning supplier, they still are very mushy and they just don't have that texture that a good pop uh, cu a cucumber that has pickled, that it should be uh, a pickle uh, has. So uh, we wanna, we're gonna space these out and do, uh, we'll figure out how many plants per section we have here and we're going to do a little of each so we know what we have and, and obviously at the time of harvest we can certainly uh, have these as well. And there is one more that I don't have in here that, I, that I've got over that we'll plant. It's called a, uh, a potato cucumber. It looks exactly like a potato or it has a, the appearance of a potato but you cut it open it's actually a cucumber so we'll uh, plant that as well. So I'm going to get the fertilizer, I'm going to get that other pack of cucumber seeds and then we'll start planting these. So I'm putting fertilizer, some sustain fertilizer in the trench where I'm going to plant the seeds. Uh, it's a 464. It's got some nitrogen. Uh, it's got 4% nitrogen, 6% uh, uh, phosphorus, and 4% potassium. Uh, sustain is an all-natural, non-mine product. It's derived from turkey litter and pine bark. So it's no heavy machinery or mines, uh, mining the ground to extract minerals from the uh, earth. So I'm going to get this done and then we will get planting our cucumbers. Now one thing I will suggest is start your cucumbers outdoors at the appropriate time when soil is about 55 to 60 degrees, preferably 60 to 65 but they'll sustain a 55 degree minimal and frost free days the nights are no longer going to be what's considered chilly or cold. Starting from seed because it, the, cucumbers are very root sensitive when transplanting. We tried to do this a couple of years ago. We started all of our cucumbers or most of our cucumbers from seed indoors and then transplanting them out. We lost 50% of them because of the, the uh, agitation that we occurred to the roots of the plant. If you take a cucumber that you started indoors and you plant it next to a cucumber that you started from seed in about four weeks, they're gonna be at the same growth cycle. So try to avoid, in our opinion, uh, starting them from seed indoors. Just direct sow them. You'll be much, much happier with the end result. All right, so I'm going to start here and show how to plant uh, pickling cucumbers. Now you can do this in any variety, shape, or form. We choose to use a trellis because space is at a premium here in an urban garden. When I grew up on the farm, we didn't trellis anything. We let them sprout on the ground. The only thing we put on a trellis was peas. So you do what works best for you. Uh, the other one was little potato cucumbers. They look like little potatoes, but they're actually cucumbers. And 
uh, we're excited to grow them as well. So with planting from seed here, I've made my trench, I've fertilized it, I've worked the soil, removing all roots. I didn't use a tiller, uh, and we've gone over many times why we choose not to till our 1800 square foot garden. There's a link in the show notes that explains that in more detail. Simply, it's gonna kill too many worms and cut up too many roots that's gonna propagate more weeds. So, I've got, I'm just gonna do, uh, we're gonna break these uh, varieties up in fives, but I'm just gonna plant on the inside trellis. And what occurs here is, I'll plant it next to the string, they'll grow up and they'll have those tentacles and they'll latch onto this and they'll just climb up. It, it's really a fascinating thing, they, they do very well. All the cucumbers that we are planting today all look like this. So if you're going to, uh, if you're going to, you know, plant them, you know, mark them, because everything looks the same until the time of harvest. So if you have a specific purpose of why you want this area to be designated for a certain variety, if you're planting multiple varieties, then you want to mark it. Another thing I will caution you, if you're going to plant varieties to save for seed, make sure you space them far enough apart. You can find different recommendations online, simply because when we plant all 10 varieties here, they're going to cross-pollinate. They're not going to affect the fruit that is produced this year. But I, if I go in and save those seeds from, let's say, the pickling cucumber, it may have a cross of some of the potato cucumber or the Armadian yard long. So it's going to have, you know, crossed in those seeds that I will get from the fruit this year if I was going to save it for next year. So keep that in mind. If you're just going to save seed and you want to do it right, plant one variety or space them far enough apart. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to take two seeds and just plant them in a close proximity to the string here and they will find the string. I got three there and that'll be five there. They'll find the string without any problem whatsoever and they will begin growing. Again, you'll need to put water to these if it is too dry for your garden. And then all we do is uh, about a quarter to a half inch of soil. Just rake the soil over it, it'll be fine. Uh, you can mulch these. I would suggest waiting or putting a very thin layer of mulch over top of them because if you put too much mulch, they're gonna have a problem penetrating through if you have four or five, six inches of wet leaves or dry grass clippings or even straw. Wait for them to kind of get established, uh, germinated and then you can pack the, the mulch around it. So I'm gonna get the rest of these planted and then uh, we'll be almost done. All right, so I got them all planted. What we've done were, we did five to seven seeds per variety, and then once we used all the varieties up, we just started again and planted some more. I did put the Armenian yard longs on the heavy trellis back here. We feel that would work best. One thing, if you've never grown cucumbers before, you will notice when you do grow them, at least for us in zone 5A, is late uh, August, early September, the plants begin to die out. Now that's just normal. Now you may occur powdery mildew that will accelerate the death of your cucumber plants, but normally they'll start phasing out in that time frame. If you want cucumbers all the way up to first frost or as long as possible, we planted ours today. We could wait another two or three weeks and plant another round of cucumbers so we can cover our bases and get cucumbers all the way to the fall and first freeze but these will produce quite a few cucumbers for us, so we're not in concern that uh, we'll be lacking cucumbers. So if you've never grown cucumbers before, or you have, we hope that this has helped you to, so you can have a better harvest this year than you did last year. When growing peppers, it's pretty easy now. You wanna keep in mind a couple of things here. Peppers are a tropical plant. They like warm soil but they don't like excessive heat, like above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. They kind of shut down until the temperatures cool back down, and then they'll, do, they'll start producing again. What we have here is on the high end of the garden, we've got a bed here ready to, uh, that's been worked with a garden fork, a hard tine garden fork. Went in there, removed the uh, weed roots, just like that, because weeds will propagate from cuttings of roots. So if you go and till, that may be causing you having a lot of weeds. 
and uh, we don't disturb or kill as many earthworms with a garden fork. So we can get 18 pepper plants in here approximately. We're going to do side by side uh, about every 12 inches. So uh, we've got a variety of different varieties of peppers, somewhere around um, 8, 16, 17, 18 varieties of peppers, all mild. We, we're not big fans of hot peppers, so one thing you want to be cautious of, until you actually harvest your pepper, you won't be able to identify a jalapeno pepper start from a, a, a California Wonder pepper uh, until you start seeing it developed on the, on the vine. Now, the other thing, Hungarian sweet peppers and Hungarian uh, hot peppers are identical until you actually bite into them. So know what you're planting or know what you're harvesting, then that'll, that'll save a lot of problems down the road if, uh, if you're not into hot stuff and you're trying to grow it for somebody else or vice versa. So uh, all these are mild, so we don't have to worry about it. These are big peppers, little peppers, short peppers, fat peppers. We got a whole mess of different varieties, sweet and, uh, uh, sweet and extra sweet type of peppers. So all we need to do here, work the soil, we got sustained fertilizer, and we got some Epsom salt. Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate. It's going to help allow the plant to green up better, add more uh, vegetation, you know, healthier plant. I did top some of these. Uh, here's a perfect example. This is a chocolate beauty. I'll pull this out of the root maker. You can see very nice roots develop, no wrap around like a traditional pot has because we were growing in the root maker, which is air pruned. Uh, the roots, I did top this plant. Uh, we did have some problems with aphids in the grow room, but we were able to, come to fight that with soapy water and applicational spray and removing toxic, uh, really bad leaves. And these have been hardened off correctly. This will begin to put, and we can see right there, uh, more leaf structure on where those nodes were at, where those previous limbs were coming out of. So all we want to do here is find my trowel, all right, and this is a little chunkier, a little clay uh, uh, chunks in the soil more than what I'm happy with, but you see as they break apart, as it rains, this will uh, knock these apart a little bit more but it's a certain time of year where I've got to get in and plant these. I can't wait another two or three weeks for the soil to dry the way I want it to. I've got to get these in the ground, and that's where we're at. So full sun is what you want. We will hook an irrigation system up at the uh, time that's needed. All right, just dig a hole. You're not going to plant these any deeper than what they were in the tray. You may see from soil level up the stalk, maybe a quarter or a half inch Ha, uh, deeper, you may see some root development, but if you plant it all the way deep like that, like you would a traditional pep uh, a traditional tomato plant, you're going to suffocate the plant. It's going to rot, and it's not going to work well. So I've got the hole dug. Um, I'm just going to add a couple teas tablespoons Epsom salt, not tonnage, just to just to uh, help the plant. Correct amount of sustained fertilizer, and I will work this in. I don't really want a solid uh, contact with the roots and the fertilizer. Just better that it works, its in, works the fertilizer or picks up the fertilizer as it's needed. And we plant and then we can come back with straw, dry, dry weed seed, chemical free dry grass clippings, or if you have shredded leaves to do that. So we're going to get these all planted and I'll show you what it looks like when we get Okay, leaves. so I got them all planted. We actually have 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 22 in this bed instead of the 18 I was planning on or I did the math wrong but we got 22 in this bed now as you can see they seem to be a little on the tight side which they are we intense plant and that means planting things tighter than what is recommended there's benefits and there's disadvantages to this particular planting method space wise we're about a foot apart that's what we did in a bed Last year, a couple beds over, we actually had them a little tighter. Uh, eight to, uh, nine, foot, nine inches to 12 inches apart did phenomenal. This here, we're a little tighter together than we were over in the bed a year ago. We're about, uh, about a foot apart. Over there in that bed last year, we were about uh, 15 to 18 inches apart. But this should be just fine. And the goal is, we got good loose soil, we've added good nutrients, we've worked the soil, removed the roots, they're happy plants, We've added fertilizer and we're watering in and we'll mulch. 
and the goal is to have just a, a, literally a hedge or a shrubbery of pepper plants that's producing heavy. So peppers are very easy to grow once you know how to do it. It's time for us to plant our yacons, or some people label them as yucas. These are from South America, the Andes Mountains. They're a root tuber that is related to the sunflower, related to similar to the Jerusalem artichoke. These will get five to seven foot tall and will yield four to 30 pounds, more four to 15 pounds here in the States of yacons, which are sweet potato appearing roots that will harvest after the first frost. They have a taste between a watermelon, an apple, and a very watery carrot, and they're less starchy, and there's a variety of things in which you can do with them, from eating them raw to making yacon chips, putting them in soups and stews, as well as you uh, can also find these in your Hispanic area of your grocery store in some places that have been peeled and frozen. So there's a variety of different things. We even made a yacon pie out of the tubers that we had. Last year we grew 24 plants and they yielded 100 pounds of yacons. That's the equivalent of about 6.4 pounds per plant. And you save the rhizomes and there's multiple videos on all of that under the tool tab on our website, strictly all about yacons. So we've got, the, you, you wanna plant them two foot apart. They're very similar in characteristics of growing as a tomato. You put it out when the warm weather occurs and the temperatures in the soil are warmer and you harvest it on these instances when the frost kills them back and based on where you're at in the region, uh, where you're at, that can be early or late. We're in zone five. We've grown them very successfully. There's an uh, individual in Manitowoc, which is just north of us in Wisconsin, that grows them successfully, as well as Canadian gardeners do grow these successfully. So it's not just something that is only a South America or Southern United States crop. They are hard to find if you are looking for them early on in the season. In the, in the plant form, they, they're costly to get them shipped. So if you can get one, grow it, and then save the rhizomes, and you can have hundreds of these things if you really want. So what we're gonna do here, you don't want to have a whole lot of nitrogen. You want to have more phosphorus, which is the center number in your fertilizer bag because they're going to have a lot of roots. Uh, and you do want some nitrogen. We've got some coffee grounds sprung on top of the bed here. We'll work in. You're going to plant these two foot apart and they're going to grow. You want a very weed free and loose soil. And that's what we have in this area. What we are going to experiment with is making them closer than two foot. We see a lot of things online that indicate, oh, you have to go X, Y, Z, or otherwise you have, it will not be successful. So what we've got is two, four, and six plants here in which we have at two foot spacings. Then we have four right here that is in a, four, a one foot apart spacing. So we're gonna plant them in the same, in the same style as we will these, and we will see if planting them t uh, closer like we have there will yield the same, hurt the yield, or uh, you know, leave, be the same, uh, more, less, or the same. So by doing this experiment, then we will know next year in this bed where we were only going to get eight, could we really get 16? So we'll figure that out as the year progresses. So it's very easy to plant these. We'll just start with this one right here. We started all these from rhizomes about three months ago. And we just want to dig a hole that no deeper than what it is in the container. And with this particular one, very loose soil, it's got two growth tips on it, which is fine. So we're just going to plant it, add some sustained fertilizer, quarter cup per plant. And then I'm just going to gently backfill to the level that it was in the container. And that's simple. That's all there is to it. We'll do the rest of these. And again, if you're going to add a fertilizer, lower on nitrogen, higher on phosphorus. Keep these watered in. We have caged them before, but last year we didn't cage them and they were, they were just phenomenal. They grew, the diameter of the stalk was bigger than a broom handle, did really, really well. And uh, so you can find more of that under the tool tab on the website. So we'll get these planted. So yacons, an unusual crop from South America, 
that we are able to grow successfully in our Zone 5 garden. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird, and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.